Hi, I'm Ross, and I normally renovate homes for a living. In this week's video, however, I'm doing something slightly different. So join me in the next 10 minutes while we build this Live Edge epoxy table. That is going to be a present for one of my favorite clients. Alright, let's get right into it. So the first thing that we need to do here is uh, cut our slab in half because uh, what we're making here is a small coffee table so we're going to use both pieces put them in the mold and run some epoxy in the middle then we need to remove the bark now the majority of it you use a chisel and just gently tap it with a mallet and then it comes out it's actually very satisfying when it pops out as one piece it doesn't always do that uh, this wasn't too bad i did have to go back and clean it with with my angle grinder and a carving desk which you will see in a minute but all in all it wasn't too bad but it's very important to remove it because the epoxy would not stick to it and then we have to get one of the edges straight this is where it's going to butt against the mold so i'm clumping my pullman track saw which i do have a track saw i just like that one better i've seen i've said that before in previous videos um, I just like my circular saw a lot, so yeah, I use it on every single project that I do. And then now that we have a straight edge on the back, we can we can square the sides. So um, we can measure up and then use the square edge on the back as a reference and then cut it to size while keeping it square. And then we repeat the process on the other piece as well. Also remove the bark here, you can see a close-up shot how most of it comes out but then as i said i had to get with my get get some of it removed with my angle grinder and this is a piece of the live edge that was cut straight now the wood i'm using here is italian olive and that's kind of a quite a thin wood so obviously we don't have we don't have a massive slab so uh, they kind of had ruined the, the live edge uh, but but it was a small part of it, so it wasn't that bad. So what I've decided to do is to use my carving disc and then replicate the live edge on that particular part because everything else was fine. Which turned out very good, actually, in my opinion. And um, and then I swapped my carving disc to a sanding disc on the angle grinder, which, again, it could take a, a quite a lot of material down. So uh, you got to be careful not to put too much pressure on it. But I still think it's a better tool to use than a, than a sander. It's, it'll be very difficult to work with a sander because uh, the sanders are designed to, to leave a flat finish. And then we get to the fun part, which is uh, mixing the epoxy and pouring it. This is a deep casting epoxy that I'm using. And I'm mixing it. It's a 2 to 1 ratio, I believe. And as I'm saying it, I'm thinking, am I talking out of my behind? I think it's two to one. Yes, yeah. I don't work with epoxy a lot. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, this is not the main thing I do. I mainly do cabinet making and renovate homes. But you know, I enjoy doing some funky stuff every once in a while. So that was a good opportunity for me to expand my horizon a little bit. So I've decided to tint the epoxy black, which. Uh, the end ended up being a really good choice because of that pattern on the wood that you can see here. So we got the whole thing molded up and then clamped up to the mold. So you see all those little clamps that I'm using to to make sure that uh, the epoxy won't go under it and then make the the slabs float, which could result in wasting quite a lot of epoxy and then making the flattening process so annoying because then you'd have to plane it. So, um, yeah, once the pouring was done, I was trying here to fill any small cracks and holes. There wasn't that many of them, but um, as I had some epoxy left over, not a lot actually. I was surprised how good I was at calculating that thing, uh, but I was expecting either to not have enough or have a massive amount left over. So I had to leave it for a week to cure, and this is me demolding it. Again, that's a daunting task because you never know if it's going to come out all right. Uh, I was particularly lucky on this one. You can actually see it came out pretty easy. So I'm just bashing the sides here with my mallet. 
put in your chisel on there and then it just popped up as it is you can see that the mold hasn't been damaged at all and then we get to the most annoying part of this project which is flattening and surfacing the slab now as i said previously this is not what i do all the time so i'm not really tooled up for flattening and surfacing slabs like that uh, what i ended up doing here was using my number four smoothing plane which you can do it's not the best tool for the job and if i can go back and redo it i would definitely build a sled for my router and then put a surfacing bit however on this one for some reason i decided to do it that way and i did it it's not impossible to be done but i would not recommend you do that it's a massive pain in the ass and it took a long time so i'm you know planing and surfacing and and, and sanding it in between while i'm checking with the with the level so i'll spare you that it was a long and tedious process and it was annoying uh, so once the sanding was pretty much done I think at this stage I've sanded it down to 240 grid and then it was just a case of finishing the edges so I was thinking about putting a fancy detail or or chamfer but uh, what I ended up doing was just a simple round over which I think it looks nice and, and smart and it's not too overpowering and then uh, we get to oil up the piece so you can actually see those beautiful colors this is the first time I'm actually working with Italian olive and I was very impressed with the color of the wood. Um, so happy that I made that choice because um, as I've told you earlier, uh, this is a present for one of my favorite clients. They did not know that I was making this so I could make all the creative decisions hoping that they would like it. Spoiler alert, they did. I just delivered it today and uh, they were very, very happy with how the table looked. And in case you're wondering why was I gifting a table to a client of mine, it's quite simple. Uh, over the last couple of years, since 2021 to be more precise, we've renovated their entire home. And just as we were getting to a point where everything was finished, uh, due to work-related reasons, they had to sell their house and move to a different country. And they weren't particularly happy about it because everything that we built for them was for them and with the intent of them living in the house. And most of it is built in so they can't take it away. So um, I thought it would be a nice gesture of me if I make them a small piece that they can just take to their new home. Hence why it's a coffee table, because I wasn't sure if they would have a dining room to make them a massive table. <laughs> but back to building the table. So we got to attach the base now. We're using threaded inserts. Got to be very careful when you're drilling those holes. So the masking tape I'm using is to signify the depth stop. Now you can use a depth stop on, the, on your drill bit, which is advisable. I should have done that, I was just lazy and I used masking tape, but um, the masking tape can slide in and you can go through your whole worktop. Be careful not to do that. Um, the reason we're using threaded inserts is because the holes on, on our base are slightly oversized to allow for the seasonal wood movement and then we can bolt it straight onto that. Now, on a table that size, we don't have a hell of a lot of wood movement, but uh, if you oversize your holes by a couple of millimeters, it'd be fine. And this is our finished table. Now, I normally try and give credit to the people who make it to the end of the video by telling you what the cost of the project was, but in this case, it's none. I'm not charging anything the customer because it's a, it's a gift. Um, what I will tell you now is that the material for that project costs about £250. But if you want to let me know what you think a table like that should cost, do that in the comments. I would very much appreciate to hear your opinion on the matter. Because as I said that to you, I don't do stuff like that all the time. So I have no idea how much something like that would even cost. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching to the end. And I will see you in the next one.